You want to fly indoors with your FPV quad like a pro? Well, you came to the right place, my friend. Stay tuned. What's happening everybody? It is your boy Sean Alami and whatever you are, you're having a wonderful time. Cinematic FPV is getting more and more popular every day and the reason for that in my opinion is it's because it introduces a new perspective, a new way to film or capture a scene. I personally got introduced to FPV right before the pandemic hit and I gotta say it was love at first sight. It was one of those things as soon as I saw it I said I need it in my life and I wanted to have it in my arsenal as a cinematographer. So I learned how to build my drone and my long journey of learning a new thing every day in flying FPV began. After a while, I started to see people flying their drones through beautiful villas, workplaces, restaurants, flying through a window and continuing with a beautiful long shot through an interior of that place. I said, hold on a minute. I thought you're supposed to only dive buildings and mountains with your FPV quad. What is going on over here? So I had another one of those, I want to be able to do this type of moments. And whenever that happens, I tend to lock myself in a room and I start to dig. I start to dig for information. To be honest with you, the first time I saw that, I didn't know what was going on. I literally knew nothing. What type of quad is it? What type of camera gets mounted on it? What kind of settings it has and etc. So after some weeks of research, I finally found a drone that I needed to buy to achieve this. And I decided to go with the Pusher ProTech 25 from iFlight this baby boy right here. And the reason I went for this drone was mainly because it was the smallest pre-built Cinewhoop out there where it had a lot of good reviews from the pros. And they come in two different versions. One is just a normal one with the motors facing up, just like any other drone you see. And they have one called the Pusher, which is the one that I have. Motors are facing downward, so it pushes the air down and it's perfect for flying through doors and windows, which is exactly what I need. But the problem was that it literally took me about three months to get my hands on this thing, mainly because of the chip shortage, but Banggood ended up sending me the wrong drone so I had to return that and order a new one so all together after three months I finally got my drone. So after I got the drone I thought to myself I am ready I'm all set I have my drone let's fly indoors. Now keep in mind that I have never flown indoors before I'm not a freestyle pilot I don't do all sorts of crazy tricks going through things I've never done that before I have experience flying through platforms diving from mountains and buildings and generally speaking I fly in open air and I thought this gonna be a touch harder and I'll be all right. Bro. So I fly for the first time and I gotta say it felt so new to me that it almost felt like I have never had FPV goggles on before. I'm not making this up. I was really frustrated. I didn't think that it was gonna be that much of a difference from flying outside, but unfortunately it was. One little tiny move on the sticks and this thing would fly and hit the wall. So I started to look for help. I was hoping to find videos demonstrating how you would start if you wanted to fly FPV indoors. So I went to YouTube, but unfortunately the videos I found didn't really provide the information that could help someone who wants to do this for the first time. There were videos called like Cinewhoop Masterclasses and the tips that were given were stuff like you have to choose your route before you fly. I mean, sure, I can do that, but I kind of want to learn how to fly first here. Or another one that they were given was that you have to maintain a constant altitude. Well, how do I do that, my friend? You want to tell me how I can do that? There were even video titles like Cinewhoop like a pro indoors and you click on the video and all you see is them flying through an environment. So after YouTube disappointed me, which rarely happens, I decided to switch to angle mode and give it a try. And as soon as I did that, I was finally able to maintain the quad a lot better. I was able to hover, fly through the room with angle mode because it acts like a normal drone. But as soon as I switched that thing to acro, this thing would fly all over the place. So I thought to myself, maybe this is how you're supposed to fly indoors. Angle mode is the right way to go. So I made a thread on infofpv.com asking if this is the case. And I was hoping they would say, yes, we're good to go. Angle mode is the way to go. That's how everybody does it. No. No. After going back and forth in the block with some of the pilots, the conversation eventually led to the topic of rates. So shout out to Rob Axel, one of the pilots from InfoFPV.com. He told me to leave the pits alone and I quote, he said just add the expo and he will take the sensitivity out 
of the steak centers. And this was the exact problem that I was having. The throttle was way too sensitive and it was not enabling me to fly in a solid altitude. So initially the throttle expo was 0.2 and then I just boosted it up to something like 0.60 and it made a huge difference. And I also added throttle limit. So I changed the throttle limit to scale and then I brought it from 100% to around 65%. So it would not just go all the way to the ceiling because that's not what I needed while I was flying indoors. And lastly, I brought the throttle mid from 0.5 to 0.25 and all these little settings definitely helped me fly a lot smoother inside. So that was the first step towards being able to fly indoors. You gotta fix your rates, make them a lot responsive if you're a beginner at least. So after I changed my rates, I flew for the first time and it was definitely a step forward. You know, one of the fundamental things that you practice when you're just starting FPV is that you practice to hover. So I said, why don't I just try to hover for a few packs, a couple of days, so I can get more used to this reaction time of the sticks. And that's exactly what I did. So I would hover over my bed in my bedroom. And I gotta tell you, this was one of the critical steps that helped me during this process. So I had now taken two big steps towards being able to fly indoors. First one was my rates, and the second one was to practice hovering. Now I can hover pretty good, but now remember, I'm in acro mode, but I'm able to maintain this squat in the air. This was a big step for me, and I was really happy with my progress. So after feeling comfortable keeping this thing in the air without crashing it for a whole pack, I started to slowly make my way around the apartment. And the first thing I realized was that I'm not able to maintain my elevation. I'm constantly going up and down due to my lack of control of the throttle. But when you're inside, you feel the altitude change a lot more as if you were flying outside. So the next obstacle in front of me was to put my focus on the throttle and learn how to maintain the same altitude at all times. And in my personal opinion, the way you do that, I think, is you show a little bit more love to the left stick throughout the whole flight. You just always have to give it a constant slight push at all times. And really just with practice, it makes you perfect. You learn so fast if you're consistent with your practice routine. Listen, it wasn't really easy for me to practice every day. This thing is loud. I had to wait for a certain amount of day for people not to be home. But despite all of that, I stayed consistent with my practice. I said, I'm gonna fly three packs a day until I can fly this thing safely through the apartment. Another key thing that I learned was that you can't be too slow because when you do that, especially going through doors or windows, the quad instantly goes into hover mode and you will leave that smooth line of flight which you're supposed to have. So you have to maintain a certain speed going forward if you want to keep that momentum to maintain that smooth flight route. Which makes it really tough, especially for a rookie like me flying in a tiny place like this. But that's the rule, you can't slow down too much. Another thing I realized was that there was a slight half a second of delay from my sticks to the reaction of the quad. So whenever I would do a slight roll, I would see it maybe half a second later in my goggles. And this is a general thing in FPV, but you notice it a lot more when you are flying indoors. So once I got a hold of that timing, that was definitely another step forward to being able to fly indoors. Now, next tip I'm gonna give you is that you should always look a little bit ahead, a little bit above than the center of the goggles because that's initially where the quad is headed and that's where it's gonna go. This will help you anticipate a lot better. So after a good few weeks, I felt like I was ready. I was ready to put the skills that I had learned in my practices into tests into the real world. But I needed a camera for this guy right here and you can't really put a GoPro on it. I mean, people do it all the time, but it's gonna make it 160 grams heavier and that would make it a lot tougher than it already is to fly it indoors. The only other option was to go with a naked GoPro and they don't really sell those on the market. You have to strip one yourself and to be honest with you, I wasn't really looking forward to doing that. It was around the same time about me feeling confused and contemplating on what camera I should get. DJI announced a new camera that weighs only 56 gram. And he was like, this little guy right here was sent to me from the heavens above. Because look, it slaps literally so easily on this drone like that perfectly and it the quality of it is just like a gopro and it shoots 4k 120 frames per second so after my camera problem was resolved i was really ready this time but i needed an admirable location somewhere it would be interesting to fly through and my first initial thought was like a hotel a luxurious property but unfortunately those are really hard to find in germany so one day i was working out at my local gym in the city and this idea just hit me that maybe if i could pull it off here it would be really cool so i put a presentation together and i presented it to my gym manager and him being the cool guy he is he said yes and boy was i excited so we picked a date and a time where the gym wouldn't be so crowded and just like that I had a date. So I went ahead and ordered some extra packs and I prepared everything the night before. But the problem was I could not sleep 
Why? Well, the thought of flying through a window on the fourth level of a building, then through people working out, was terrifying enough that would keep my eyes wide open throughout the night. I promise you, I'm not making this up. I probably got about three hours of sleep and the next day I woke up, I looked at myself in the mirror and I was a mess. Practice all this time, I was ready, the big day was upon me and I was far from being 100%. But there was no turning back. I had to show up and I had to perform. So I sucked it up took a shower, drank a very strong coffee, and made my way there. Now I'm gonna go through a step-by-step -step guide on how I was able to pull this thing off. First of all, I had to take care of the rules and the regulation. I hold an A2 SUP open category drone license. I had permission of the property of the owner, and we were not flying higher than 30 meters above the ground. And I had a second person keeping the drone in line of sight at all times. After that, I had to find a spot for myself in the gym where I could fly from, where my goggles would have a good, great solid angle towards my flight path. I knew roughly where I wanted to fly, so I picked a corner in the gym and I started setting up. Then went around the gym to choose my exact flight path. And after I did that, I told the gym manager to let everybody know that there's gonna be a small drone flying through when they're exercising. There were signs printed everywhere the day before we started to shoot. People knew that they were gonna be filming, but I wanted to make sure everybody who was working out that day knew what was going on. And we also kind of blocked the certain machines that were directly on the flight path. So after I went over the necessary safety procedures, I started to set in my camera settings, which was the following. So the resolution, I was at 4K 16 by nine, and the frame rate was 25 frames per second and I was keeping the standard D-Warp format. The color profile was at D-Cine and the white balance I was keeping at a solid number at 4,900. Some people might keep that on auto because you're changing environments, but I want to be able to control it myself in post. And for the ISO and the exposure, that was the only thing that I had set on auto because I was coming from a really bright outside to a lot darker environment inside auto was my only option to go and as of stabilization i had rock steady on so my flight path was that i would fly through a window and fly downstairs go through the gym and then come back up now remember the only place i had flown indoors was my apartment which was a lot tinier than this gym which kind of ended up working to my advantage having to fly in a small place like this turned me into a better indoor pilot per se so i wanted to go through the first pack by just practicing the route inside without having to go outside through any window so practice your flight route and don't try to nail it on the first time around all right so everything was very smooth and i was able to fly around the gym without any stress easy money now the scary part came along which was flying through the window now the window of my room is three times bigger than the window of the gym so i figured it would be a good practice if i just fly through the windows and just practice that so I can get a good hang of it. As soon as I took off, this is where my adrenaline started to kick in. Stress was through the roof and I was a bit even shaking from inside. I wanted it to end, to be honest with you. I wanted to quit. I wanted this feeling to stop, but there was no option. There was no turning back. I had to get it together. So I fly outside and I go and I go and I go and I eventually turn around. And first thing I notice is I can't even see this freaking window. It's so small. And like my heart rate was not already to the ceiling. It starts pumping even harder. Now I had practiced this descent many times at home. And a couple of things I learned was that you can't come too slow and you can't come in too fast. You had to come in with a medium speed that when you enter the building, you can maintain that speed without having to stop because when you do that, you're not able to continuously proceed in your flight route. And you also needed to have a solid descending curve line, which meant you had to descend in one smooth line. Otherwise, it wouldn't look good. So the trick I was using was that I would put my lipo power in the center of the goggles on my OSD. So I would line that battery logo on the window from the beginning of the descent all the way through the end. And it has worked for me so far, but the trick is that you have to work with the throttle the whole time to keep that marker on the window. So I'm up here now, I have this tiny window ahead of me. My legs are shaking and I swear I could do this easy at home. But here I was put way out of my comfort zone. And when that happens, we don't perform 100%. But I guess that's something that just gets better with experience. I made a whole video on how you can overcome your fear flying FPV and I will put the link for you right up here.
finally I was able to pull this off as you saw and everything went really smooth and I gotta say after all these times of practicing going through these sleepless nights all this adrenaline all this being out of my comfort zone all this stress you gotta ask yourself is it really worth it and I gotta say hell yes the euphoria I felt for a couple of days after doing this was just amazing it definitely paid off in my opinion. Now, I know I talked too much on this video, but I had a reason for that. I just hope that this video will be that video that was missing for me when I first wanted to start learning how to fly indoors. So my friend, if you did find this video useful, show me some love, hit that like button, and subscribe for more content like this. Until perhaps one day we can fly together at some point, my friend, stay safe. <laughs>